So, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about Tales of Tenorio, so I want to give what I expect. Now again, this is my expectations. If you're expecting something different, good for you. But, we're here to talk about my expectations, so we're going to talk about my expectations. The gameplay... I've seen- I've talked about this on community posts before. I've been saying that Tales of Tenorio will probably be like Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl or Hasbin Adele. Very visually appealing, have issues elsewhere. The issues elsewhere, in my opinion, will involve PvP, but we'll talk about that later. The gameplay, I'm not sure how much content we're gonna receive, but it looks like it's open world. I'm gonna tell you, I haven't paid much attention to Tales of Tenorio at all. So I think it's open world. <laughs> so I'm expecting gameplay somewhat similar to Scarlet and Violet. Maybe. The plot, I'm not gonna expect too much. The plot of Brick Bronze was very... Not very bare bones, but very predictable and not that bare bones at all. You could have easily expected Jake to be the rival. Not rival, Team Eclipse, that's what I meant. And Perrin getting captured, is that anything special? Come on. It's so, it's and then Lumia Legacy. It's not that different. Your parents don't get kidnapped, but instead, oh, you need to track down finding rocks, and oh, look at this evil guy. It's actually a corporation that everyone thinks is good. Totally not the Ether Foundation, which, by the way, is from Gen Seven, which is probably one of the worst storylines ever. I'm just gonna say right now, Tales of Tenorio overall, I'm not expecting much at all. My expectations aren't that high, which is probably overall a good thing, but if they meet those expectations, then ugh, that's not going to be great. Okay, next up, the PvP, which is what I'm most interested in. Now, one nice thing about these creature catching games, which is not a term I like to use, but it's the correct terminology, creature catching games, everyone values different things. There's a whole training community, a hunting community, which coincides with the training community, and a PvP community, which is completely separate from the other two. Which may as well be one, Umbrella. You could do a Venn diagram if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I'm mostly a PvP guy. I play competitive Pokemon a lot, mostly doubles. I don't expect doubles in Tales of Tenorio to be very good, but I, can, I play singles as well. I'm pretty good at singles. Singles is actually quite easy. So, yeah, I'm most excited for the PvP. Do I expect much? Uh, no. But that kind of more goes under the umbrella of I'm not expecting much from Tales of Tenorio in general. You see, the thing is, with Doodle World's impact, Doodle World is a game I resent to the core. Never played it, never intend to play it. Which kind of means I don't have the right to judge it. But I'm more talking about two things why I hate Doodle World. First off, the visuals, they're disgusting. A 144 PPNG on my screen is what I'm using to battle another 144 PPNG. No. And then PvP, I've heard some horrendous things like priority you just get priority. I don't think it's even like a nerfed Gale Wings. I think you just get priority for whatever that was. It doesn't look fun at all. I've heard horrible things about Doodle World PvP. And the issue is, I kind of think Tales of Tenorio PvP might fall into that area. I will play Tales of Tenorio, but honestly, I don't expect it to, to overtake Lumion Legacy PvP. Lumion Legacy PvP is actually really great. It's actually incredible. Every Lumion is very balanced and usable, and the Uber Lumions like Mutagon and Metronet, while they're Ubers and for a reason, it's not stupid Ubers, like, it's not like if you're like Kyogre in the OU in current Gen 9. So, I think Jamie Jamie does a great job at balancing, and he even makes the effort to nerf them. Which, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually we got to a point where every Lumion would be OU, but still viable. By the way, if you don't know what I mean by OU, it's just tears. If you play Pokemon Showdown, you know what they mean. Lumions have tears, if you want to know what tier they're in, you can look it up. And if you don't know, I, I, join a Discord server. <laughs> join my Discord server, I'm sure someone will know. Link in the description. And subscribe. Anyways. Also, there's a type chart. I haven't spent much time looking at the type chart at all. 
but I mostly, two things catch my eyes. First off, unlike Lumia Legacy, the light type does not replace the fairy type. They're just separate types. They have the fairy type and the light type. So they got the light type down there with the fairy type and a whole other type called the cosmic type. Why? Don't know, but just gonna say I did not look at much. The cosmic type looks garbage. <laughs> I might be wrong, but it looks horrendous. <laughs> This is my general expectations. I'm not expecting too much else. I will talk about a few other things I noticed though. Oh, I'm checking my script right now. I forgot to talk about designs. I hate a lot of them. <laughs> okay, I don't hate too many, but there are a lot of designs that I really don't like. I hope it's like Lumia Legacy where the first few designs are garbage. And then as time goes by, we get really good stuff. We go from Mobile Legends character Top Tab to Bar Badger, which is the example I like to use the most. Despite it being a bipedal animal, it looks incredible design-wise. And that's why Bar Badger is my number four hated Lumion in all of Lumion Legacy. The only Tenorian I particularly like is Mysticade, and I put that one at a 7 out of 10. Mysticate is the only Tenorian I like, and I personally just like aquatic sea creatures like that in general. Now, I'm, it's not a, Is it a fact? Dynastagun is probably next at 5 over 10, in my opinion. The other Tenorian I don't like. There's a pair of platypus one, which is one of the more memorable ones. Don't particularly love him, 3 out of 10. But the starters! I do not like the starters. So, if I- I'm on the Discord server right now checking them. The grass starter is bipedal and has so much going on. It is an eyesore. As a brony, I have an incredible example that I am not going to show just to prevent you guys from cringing. This is an issue with the other starters. They all have way too much going on. The fire starter is probably my favorite, but it has a lot going on. It's interesting and kind of cool. But it's not very fun to look at. The water starter looks... I'm gonna... I'm, I'm sorry. The water starter looks absolutely hideous. I'm sorry. But so many Tenorians just don't look good to me. At all. They either look too bland, too crazy, or just downright stupid. I'm sorry. And yes, this applies to Fordrake. A fan favorite because he got special treatment. Just because he got special treatment doesn't mean I think a blind cactus tail hammer looks good. For Drake is a 4 out of 10. Lives up to his name. <laughs> so, uh, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, this is something I forgot to mention in the gameplay part. I forgot to talk about the voice acting. I'm just gonna say, I think it'll be very weird, but honestly probably good. I have some exciting news. Your friend has shown remarkable potential and passion for Tenorians. I've invited them to the research facility and would like you to join us.